everyone, and welcome to Read This Now, the weekly webcast where Brad Gustafson and I share two books <laughs> and Brad dances uh, as right. encouragement for you to read them when, Brad? Right now, people, right now. It's not, That's I don't right. know, if, is it a dance or is it like a walk-on move, kind of like walk-on music? I don't know. I, I don't know what the technical term is for it. I just know that it results in a lot of joy for me and our three and a half viewers, I'm sure, too. Nice. <laughs> so and how are you, my friend? What'd you read this week? I'm uh, like so good. And in full like disclaimer transparency, I, I feel like the last few weeks and maybe month or more, I've been a little bit more emotional than usual. Usually I'm kind of low key or not low key is not the right word, but, um, but like I'm more in touch with my feelings and it could be the pandemic. I don't know what it is, but, mm -hmm. but it's, it's okay. Right. I, um, I'm kind of sure. embracing it. But anyway, the reason that I preface this is this book that I'm about to share, it's had me thinking and reflecting on really deeply more than ever, like how much I love reading and how glad I am mm -hmm. that people helped me fall in love with reading. Cause I didn't always love reading and it right. took people honestly talking about books that got me reading more and then it just turned into a snowball. So I was one of those people who wasn't a re big time reader yet, or maybe it was more kind of sterile PD books. And now I'm just on fire. And this book again, like so great. So I can't my, wait. Yeah. That's the, that's the preface. I also want to say I'm so proud because my middle school daughter, Hope, who, who you know, um, she book talked this book, to me like a few weeks ago and did such a great job that I immediately bumped it up on my list. I'm like, that sounds amazing. And I read it and I, it's like the fatherly thing where it's like, could life get any better where my kid book talked a book and I'm like, I actually, dang, that makes me want to read that book. So I read it and I'm like, okay, I see why she liked the book. So all of that build up and the book will be worth it. Um, the, I want to just kind of take you to the setting of this book so you can just let your mind go there for a second. So imagine living in a world where all of your um, decisions, your accolades, your achievements, your mistakes were broadcast to the world, not on TV or technology, but through tattoos. So oh, wow. you get promoted at work, that's a tattoo. You, uh, your job, um, you, uh, just everything, your kids, your family tree, your, your family losses. And it's very symbolic and outward. And, and that's the world that Leora, the main character lives in. And, and each of the people in the book also have different kind of gifts and skills. Leora actually has a really rare one where she can read mm -hmm. tattoos and in ink. And what that means is, is she identifies with the feelings and emotions that were associated with when the ink or that tattoo was applied, um, which can be some, so basically, Jen, she can kind of see through fake ink sometimes. Like if, uh, if someone wants to pretend they got promoted or whatever, fudge their family tree, uh -huh. she can sense and be like, ooh, there's deception there, or oh, there's pain there, right? Or just, you know, it's just this really cool, fascinating thing. So I'm going to share, this is a rare read this now moment. I have, I think it's called the dust jacket. Yes, yes, of, woo! Thank you, thank you. Uh, the book is so popular in my house that we're all fighting over it. So I wasn't able to bring the actual book in, but I, they spared me the jacket. So you can see the beauty, uh, like it's like a, an ink thing. It's by Alice Broadway. And uh, th this is very symbolic too. Another thing I think you should know that um, is a big part of the story. When, when people are born in, uh, forgetting the city where this takes place or the village, they get to choose their first mark, right? Or their first, it's like a big deal, but you don't have to do it right away. Most people do, um, but some people kind of wait and some people do dumb ones, probably like even in this day and age, right? Like why, what was I thinking kind of thing? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but Leora takes her first ink really seriously and she knows she wants it to be kind of linked to her best friends who plays a key role in the story. And I can't really say like what she chooses, but it's just a, it's one of the most epic book moments I've ever, ever been wow. associated with. So I'll kind of leave that teaser teaser out there. So highly recommend. This is actually, I believe, a trilogy. I hope sometimes trilogies turn into more, and I hope that mm -hmm. that is the case. I'm actually on the second one right now. 
which is called Spark. But be sure to start with Ink by Alice Broadway. And uh, I think it'll remind you like why you love reading and maybe it'll hook some kiddos on why they will begin to love reading soon. Wow, I love that. Now, so I have a question though. You mentioned that Hope had read it and book talked it to you. So are you saying it's kind of a middle school read? Like you think that's appropriate for that level kid? Yeah, I always, I'm, as you may know, I'm hesitant and not very good at estimating ages, partly because if there's a single swear word or kiss, it automatically <laughs> is like for college people, right? So a little bit too conservative. Um, anyway, I think middle school for sure. It, maybe it could even go down from there, but I, let me sure. finish the trilogy before I, before I go that far. But I mean, even just reading level, you think sixth, seventh oh. graders would understand the plot and all of that and would be... Yeah, oh yeah, for sure, for okay. sure. Yeah, all so right. for that, for plot purposes, it probably does spill down to fifth grade, I, for, I would say. The, mm -hmm. other th the other nuance that I didn't mention, um, I never know how much to mention, but this is probably an important one. There's this parallel village or society that's kind of mysterious and you, you know, yeah. they're not really part of the book, but they, they're alluded to like folklore and they're called blanks. Oh, and yeah. as the name implies, they're people who are outcasts who have not been inked and um, stories are told about them that are just horrific and scary. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine just from a young age, Leora was taught how evil the blanks are. And even they have museums of stories and there's even like a, a blank floating in water or preserved in water. And it's shocking and it feels weird to Leora to see someone without Mark. Like they can't fathom yeah. that. Yeah. And that's an important element of the story I won't go too far into, but it's, it, it's a, uh, it's really fascinating and deep on, on a, not just an entertainment level, but you can make all kinds of parallels and connections to people that we might not understand in our yeah. lives and, and our assumptions and misperceptions and the stories we've maybe been told or the stories we tell ourselves and maybe the stories those people are telling themselves about us. And it's just sure. a really cool, deep, rich, magical book that again and this will be the last time I say it it just I just am so thankful to people like you who share so much about reading because had people not done that I don't think I would have been here reading and book talking with hope this is one of the the things that I also tend to love so much about sci-fi or fantasy books um, is that you know, there's usually a metaphor there. There's a lesson to be learned about the human condition and how we interact with each other and what peril may lie ahead if certain actions go unchecked, you know, that kind of stuff. The, those things are woven in, but usually done in such a creative um, and interesting way that it's not a beating you over the head but also mm -hmm. gives you the opportunity to think creatively about solutions i think as well i love books in that genre and that one sounds really pretty impressive yeah it's it's incredible it's incredible all i can say is it's incredible yeah. tell us the title and author again show it to yeah, us it's called time. ink ink by mm -hmm. alice broadway awesome. And, awesome and the last thing the last last thing i'll say i read this um I think I book talk uh, talked about a year ago, a book called The First 50 Pages. I think uh -huh. I did. And it was a writing book on really how to hook and engage readers. And one of the right. things I read, I think, in that book was the strength of your protagonist mm -hmm. is directly dependent really on how evil, scary, conniving the antagonist is, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. the, the stronger your villain is, that actually can help, like, Leora shine sure. in some ways well let me just tell you there um this book delivers in the villain category it's like oh my gosh when the character enters on a page or in a, in a chapter it's like i get scared i mean it's right. it's a real like it's, it's good it's good stuff and it's well done so wow i love it well thank you i'm yeah, gonna have yeah. to add that one to my list because that sounds like something i really really enjoy um, it's so interesting, Brad. I look forward to this show each week because I love to hear what you've been reading, but also I get excited about sharing what I've been reading. And oftentimes we have sort of a parallel journey um, about that. And this week is similar in so much as I've been thinking a lot about my journey as a reader um, and to reading and also to reading different types and formats of books, 
because like you said, other people have been sort of that Pied Piper for me, you know, like seeing other people love certain types of books makes you think, well, gosh, maybe I'm missing something or, or I should give that a try or whatever. And you might remember last year, I really uh, took a deep dive into graphic novels last year as a format that I had a lot of respect for, but hadn't personally come to love quite as much, you know, as other people were talking and about them. And so last year, I, I really spent a whole year trying to immerse myself. I read other things, but I made sure every week I was reading at least one graphic novel. And um, I really found some that I fell absolutely in love with. And so this year, while that hasn't been my goal, I have been, I, I find myself longing for a graphic novel. Mm. Like now I find myself saying, oh, I need a graphic mm. novel this week. I miss them, right? So one that came out um, at the beginning of this month that I've been hearing a lot about, was really excited to read, um, I got to read this week and I've been dying to share it with you uh, because it is just so, I, I'm gonna show the cover right now because I'm making a prediction here, Brad. The book mm -hmm. is called Flamer and it's by Mike Curato. And I'm going to tell you what, this might be the only time you ever see this cover without lots of stickers on the front of it, because this mm. book is going to win some awards. Mm. I mean, this book is incredible. And sometimes I think maybe you've had this experience too. When a book is really profound, it's harder to book talk. Like, mm -hmm. because I don't know, for me, I, wrapping my feelings around the book is sometimes hard when the feelings are so big. You know, like it's hard to put them into words. And I sort of feel that way a little bit about this book. It is about a, a boy um, who is getting ready to go, uh, Aiden, who's get, who's, it's a summer between middle and high school. And he's spending the summer at camp, okay, as so many kids do. And like a lot of kids who are making that transition from middle to high school, he's nervous. You know, like he's nervous about that transition. That nervousness is compound, compounded by the fact that He's leaving a private Catholic school and going to public school for the first time at high school. He's nervous about that. He's nervous because things at home aren't going real well. Mom and dad are fighting all the time. And he's gone off to camp, leaving his younger siblings at home in an environment that doesn't feel very safe. So mm -hmm. he's nervous about that. He's also nervous because he doesn't seem to fit in anywhere that he belongs. He doesn't fit in at home. Dad has expectations of him that he feels like he can't meet. He doesn't fit in at school where he's the subject of a lot of bullying. He doesn't even seem to fit in fully at camp where a lot of his friends that he's known for years have developed interests that he doesn't have. He feels sort of like the odd duck, you know, and everywhere that he, he goes. Um, and one of those, one of, one of the things that he's grappling with at this point also is his sexual identity. He thinks he might be gay, but then he doesn't think he, he's gay. He's not sure, but he knows that if he um, embraces that part of him, that that will lead him to more conflict with people in his life. And he's frightened about that. And so it, in a lot of ways, this book is a lot like that time period in your life, it's full of extremes, right? There's moments of extreme sadness and worry in this book. And then there's also moments of like <laughs> snorting laughter. There, you know, you, you go from, I went from feeling so sad and emotional about Aiden's journey to just like giggling because something was happening in the story uh, that was so funny. But I wanted to share one part of the book uh, that I can't seem to get out of my head. It's a part I keep coming back to over and over again. Is that okay? Yes. I keep thinking about this particular section. I'm going to read it first, and then I'm going to show the pictures, okay? Okay. Um, because there's very few words on the page. Let me get there, first of all. Okay. So these are the only words on the page. I'm going to read them to you. It's just going to keep going on like this forever. On and on and on and on. Too short, too fat, not man enough, not white enough, not straight enough. I'll never be safe anywhere. Mm. And then I want you to look at these drawings, Brad. 
he's in his bed, in his tent. He's just had sort of a altercation with his friend who's also his tent mate. He feels very, very much alone. And then the mm -hmm. very next page, I don't even know if the camera will capture how beautiful and profound this drawing is. Mm. This poor kiddo feeling so completely attacked by his own feelings. Mm -hmm. And the book goes on to where, you know, Aiden comes to this moment where he really has to decide whether he wants to continue living. And I want to go, I'm not usually a big fan of spoilers, but there is, I will tell you the spoiler in this book is that he makes the, he makes the choice to continue on. But what's interesting to me is that in so many ways, um, not only is Aiden a victim of the own voices in his head, but it's those voices that end up having to save him. Mm. It's so beautiful and profoundly done. Um, and the cover of the book, one of the people who blurbed it said, this book will save lives. And oh my gosh, I think that's true. Mm. I can just imagine so many kiddos who feel alone and different and weird and like um, no one could possibly ever love them picking up a book like this and feeling seen. But the last, the last, last thing I want to say about this book is that, um, as someone who doesn't look or on paper have a lot of the same characteristics as Aiden, I found myself wishing this book had been around when I was a kid because, you know, we talk about how kids need to see themselves in books, right? Mm -hmm. But gosh, sometimes we need to see kids who are really different from us so that we can understand what they're going through. Like, mm -hmm. I wish as a middle schooler, I could have read this book to understand what maybe some of my friends were experiencing. Mm. So anyway, it sounds so dark and it is, but there's also like fart jokes and archery and camping mm. and, and lots of beauty in this book. I don't think my book talk has really done it justice, but I mm. think you should read it right now. It's called Flamer. It's by Mark, Mike Curato. And again, I think this book is going to win a bunch of awards. So yeah, I think you I think you did it justice, Jen. That was beautiful. Um, it's a gorgeous book. Yeah, the couple things, everything resonated, but a couple things that I'm still like pouring over. Um, like if that if reading that could help just one kiddo, because we know kiddos right. are struggling. Well, we know human beings are struggling, but kiddos too with things that you brought up and like whether they want to see ending their own life as a solution. And if that book could help just okay. one kiddo, um, boy, that'd be, that'd be amazing. And the second part, uh, real quick, um, you're so right. Like the level of empathy and some of the words that sometimes kids use so flippantly, casually that destroy and hurt and mm -hmm. maybe lead to feelings that maybe that character is feeling like I just, I kind of agree with you. Had had we all had books like that, maybe we would have approached life and conversation a little differently. So it sounds right. really powerful. Oh, it is. And and here's something I didn't mention. I feel like my book talk was so, so heavy. And I, I want to make sure that people understand that this book does have some heavy parts to it, but it also has a lot of joy and love in it. Mm -hmm. So it is very balanced, but the author of the book, some people watching this might recognize as being the author of a series of picture um, books um, called Little Elliot in the Big City, which is about the spotted elephant who takes adventures, right? Like Little mm. Elliot in the Big City was the first one. The art for those books is very different from the art in Flamer, but they are so gorgeous and awesome. I mean, those books are beautiful. If you don't know those, I guarantee you they're in their, your media center, Brad. You have to go okay. check them out. So a lot of kids who might know Little Elliot from when they are elementary school, then they get into like seventh or eighth grade in high school. They get to revisit this mm. author in a totally different way. But what I learned from listening to Mike Curato this week is that even though this is a work of fiction, it's based very much on some of his own experiences, being at camp one summer, wondering if the world would be better off without him, mm. and coming to a place where he could uh, decide, no, the world needed him. And thank goodness, you know, thank goodness he made that choice. And we want all of our kiddos to make that choice. Mm. If they ever feel that desperate, we want them to feel loved and that mm -hmm. the world needs them because they really, really do. We need them all.
Well done, Jen. Well, um, on that note, right? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. Let's let's give the link in case people want to kind of cruise through other titles that we sure. think are worthy of checking out pretty quickly or right now, as the show name applies. We're um, curating at bit.ly forward slash read underscore this underscore now. And obviously the video archives are there, but also you could just cruise through the titles with age suggestions, right? Yes. <laughs> suggestions is the right word because yeah, we yeah. trust you all to know your kiddos yeah. better than that we do. So cool. Thanks, Jen. This is always Thanks, one, of my, one of my favorite parts of my week. I appreciate it. Me too. I'll see you next time. Happy reading, yeah. everybody.